interesting. Technically, you're too far from both stones, but the moment white picks a side, um, I guess he can develop it. <laughs> it's an interesting little idea. Probably not one of the basic ideas. I think it's uh, probably more practical to get a position like this. But not the end of the world. Mm, this kind of defeats the whole point of this move. Because now, now you're not interested in a fight on this side because you've settled this side. So now you're saying, I want the fight over here, but now this distance is too far. So you kind of defeated the purpose of this position. So in that case, just go here. Just go here and then go here or here or here. I think open sides first. So my definition of open sides is we take the corner move. The corner move. Is there anything in between it? No. Corner move. Corner move. Anything in between it? Yes. Corner move. Corner move. Anything in between it? Yes. Corner move. Corner move. Nothing in between it. So we want this side or this side is the idea. Okay. Um, so I would like to go down here. It's a pretty safe and easy move. Um, do be careful about extending over here, because over here there is a white stone to support an invasion. So if white chooses to invade in the future, uh, now black wants to make a base, but Black can't do that without touching, so Black has to go here. If we back off one, then when White goes in, now we have enough to make a natural-looking base. So I would extend here if I wanted to extend from this. Um, since this is not an open side or an empty side, I want to say the corner enclosure is more valuable technically hard to say but i think this is where you should play probably okay this this shoulder hit is a very nice looking move to develop this square and i think it's very nice unfortunately there's a missing point right here so if we develop this square with the normal sequence okay uh maybe something like that or even you can just go here and you're developing the square, but now I just go in. Well, I have a base no matter what you do. And you don't get anything in the square. You can go here, but like it's really difficult to attack. Now let's pretend you have a stone right here. Or right here. But let's say you're working with a star point. Okay, let's say you have a stone right here. Now when you shoulder hit and black goes in, now you have a way to uh attack this and now you have a way to make this very dangerous for black so having the extension before you build the square is very helpful so i think just making an ascension here or here or something is probably fine oh don't ignore touching moves touching moves, ignoring touching moves is a good way to die okay extending from the corner is a little bit more valuable than extending from the center star point just because the corner has two edges, so it's a little bit easier to work with. Uh, black could just start wrapping around this and then fix their cut. And now these uh, stones are never going to get the square. All they have now is potential for cash. But the star point and fourth line don't want cash line, usually. Want mm -hmm. cash. So they want this section. Oh, I think someone's uh, micro uh, microphone's on. Okay. Let's see. Uh, I think uh, Patricia or Patricia. Your mic is on. Your mic is on.
Okay, so this is good to reduce the extension from this, but I think uh, if we're going to ignore this, I think building off of this position into this square should be very valuable. And then black also is building up this square. So I think these are the two nice squares. White could try to build this one, but you ignored the stone. So it feels a little bit awkward because black can just get around and destroy it. So it feels a little bit awkward to try to build this one because you ignored. Um, if you want to build you uh, the bottom right, I want to say one point jumps are going to be your friend. Um, if you want to reduce... Uh, Caps and shoulder hits are typically, but you can also use the stones here to just get around. And now you're building your square while reducing theirs, so it's a kind of a double meaning. Uh, let's assume it was like this though. Now let's assume that we're saying I wanted I want to make sure black doesn't get too much in the square. And if you want to do a reduction tactic, you can use shoulder hit, cap, shoulder hit, cap, somewhere on the line where the stones are working together to get the square. Uh, this means that if you play somewhere in here, you can run away to your friends. Um, so I want to say probably this one is going to be as deep as you can go. This one looks too far. And then these two look fine, but also you want to push it down as much as you can. So you got to be very careful, but if you can go deeper, it's usually better reduction. Um, so let's say we wanted to do that we could play here and now we quickly can escape and destroy the square um you could also play a cap uh here you could also choose this one and this one's a little bit less but it's also building your squares while taking their square so that one's also possible and uh for any single digit cues like 5q plus Attachments are also pretty nice to accomplish the same goal. However, it does require a lot more reading because of all the cutting points. It requires good reading, good judgment, uh, ladder breaker judgment, and there's a lot to consider there. So I think caps are going to be your friend uh, at this level. Okay, touch nubby or touch uh, stretch. Okay, this is a lot of cutting points. So a good rule of thumb is one space jump to one space jump, whoever pushes first has the better shape. Because here, white has zero cutting points and black has one and sometimes two. So whoever pushes first has the stronger shape. So if black plays right here, black shape is connected and white has three cutting points. So very dangerous. Fix your cuts. The secret to good, strong shape is the cutting points. So if I go right here, this entire position's done. There's no way to connect all your stones together. You still have cutting points. You're losing, you're losing your foundation here. Um, so basically, this entire position's going to be destroyed. So white really needs to fix this. Maybe here. And then just give up one stone and fix. Now everything's connected and your position's strong again. Uh, you could also go here uh, because this is a ladder. Yeah. So this would also fix everything. Uh, there is a net here too. Depends on how good you are at reading nets. So net go problems are very nice. Hmm, not sure what everyone's doing. Okay, it looks like white is aiming for this chunk. There's a big opening right here. Um, maybe it's possible. What does this do? I guess you're trying to connect stuff. Uh. I don't know what this does. This is a uh, weird looking move. 
if we want to destroy White's position, you could go th straight through the cutting points, or you could invade, approach a fourth line, or approach a fourth line. You could play some reduction ideas, cap, shoulder, cap, shoulder. Um, you could go for more dangerous invasions. But I think the simplest is just cut. If you can just walk through the cutting points, it's usually the easiest. Okay. I don't think I would be interested in this yet. This is good end game for just going in here. Is good end game, but there's like half the board right now, so I care a lot more about this than I do about that. It's much smaller. Uh, here now everything's connected. Okay. Uh, but yep. Now there's cutting points everywhere. This is because you don't let your opponent walk through your knight's moves and one space jumps. So shape, good shape is all about the connections and understanding how the cuts work. Uh, I, I don't think there is an answer here. I think you just have to let something get cut. It's probably just here is the best. And then you can probably kill the cutting stone. Very difficult situation to get out of. Mm-hmm. Make sure everything doesn't die is important. White, you still have some more forcing moves. Because this is in a lot of danger, so black is going to want to respond. So you can do all of this for free, because black is gonna die otherwise. Then you can go do whatever you want. And it is a one space jump, not a two space jump. Two space jumps have cutting points. Unless you're making a base. <laughs> if you're making a base, the edge really helps your cutting points. Um, but I locally, if we're making a base, we want fourth line because we have support on both sides. Um, it feels very awkward to do this right now because these two stones have been ignored this entire game. But for some reason, after white gets this massive framework, now we're interested in defending it. So I think the timing is very off. Uh, probably just invade before it's too late. Okay. Uh, this has two elephant eyes, and an elephant eye is a diagonal one space jump. It jumps over that space. So an elephant eye jumps over one space diagonally. The elephant eye has a very easy to find cutting point. So this does not block this area very well because it has two cutting points. Um, shoulder hit, and also a Knight's Move has only one cut, where that was two cutting points in the same shape. Uh, and then you just play solid next to a cutting point. And you see now you're blocking it quite nicely. And if your opponent does something over here, then you just block what you can. Uh, white, technically, you could probably just throw a stone in here or here, and it can't die. However, I think you're winning the game. Just fix your two space, and then you you just win. Uh -huh. Good, fix the cutting points. Good that you're fixing this. Uh, this is a one point better, kind of, but whatever. Uh, this is a little bit of a chicken move. I think you played too fast. This is a tiger's mouth. In other words, if white plays in here, you shut the jaw and eat the stone. Okay. So you don't have to fix that because it's not a cutting point. So go in, push first and then go in. Just the point is get to the big framework because you're gonna lose the game. Uh, I really want to encourage you to have more fighting spirit because it feels like to me, you're like, okay, let's just finish the, the position. But your goal of the game should not be to finish a position. Your goal should be to win. So if your opponent's going to just take half the board, forget the position. Just go destroy it. Go die or something. Go learn. Because it doesn't matter how good your position looks if it doesn't help you in the game. Making a good-looking position is not as important as trying to find the win condition. So the win condition in this game is going to be to stop white from getting half the board. Uh, so I wouldn't even care about that position right now. I I want to stop this because I'm going to lose the game otherwise. 
if you're just finishing the position and you're down by a large chunk, then it's not even worth playing out because you uh, don't have the fighting spirit. Okay, a uh, nice attacking attempt. However, you are leaving a lot of cutting points, and since this is your win condition, just fix and you win the game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a little too much. <laughs> too much. Don't try to kill it, just surround stuff. Let them live small is fine. Oops. Oops. You did get this block, though, but you lost several points doing it. So just block in the first place and don't die. Oh, someone's playing too quickly and not doing their go problems. Uh, so if my students saw this, I would be like, okay, go do like 50 uh, take eye problems, 50 kill problems f for trying to kill something that's not killable. <laughs> uh, Black, if you fix right here, it's one point better. Small difference, but sometimes helps. Be very cautious about doing this. If I'm in a losing position, I'm going to go for the co. Okay, I I have no problem going for the co. I'm going to lose the game. Why would I not take a risk? So in this case, back off once and then block. Now there's no co. So now they have to fix. So it's two points, but your opponent doesn't get the option to make a game deciding co or something, right? Don't give them that option when you're like in a massively winning position. Don't even let them have an idea. Okay, this is not big compared to something like this. Or I guess at this point it's too late. Everything in here should technically die. Ah, no, chicken move. It's not, not yet. Don't fix it until it exists. Uh, two minutes, okay. Uh, so the way to kill an invasion when there's no escape route. There's nowhere to go. It's all blocked. No cutting points in it, no escape route, no issues at all. It's a massively strong blue line. Then the way you kill the stone is you attack it from the second line. Right? Um, because if you attack the eye space directly, it doesn't have enough room for two eyes. Box four, even if they do this, is only a three. They can't make two eyes right here if you're specifically targeting the eyes. So as long as you attack the eye space from the second line and then watch your cutting points, this stone has no way to live. So the only other option is for it to run away. But there's nowhere to go. So as long as you just poke out the eye space, you can actually kill this stone. But only at the end of the game. It's very important to have this massive wall. Because if you try to do this and they can escape, you destroy everything of your position. It's a horrible, horrible attacking plan if they can just run away. But uh, if they can't run away, then this is a way to kill the stone. Now, with that being said, there's lots of life and death problems. So probably in a space this big, um, they might live. But it's kind of one of those learning pains. You have to, you have, to have confidence in your ability to keep this area. So it's better to lose the game and learn than it is to play a chicken move. Um, I'm out of time, so hopefully you all found that helpful.